Shalom, you guys. I'm going to try and uh, make this brief and not ramble too much. But uh, regarding the situation with the sister, our sister, Joy Morgan, who's been missing since December, um, I kind of was just, it's been really on my mind. So I've been thinking about it or whatever. And I really feel like there's a bigger picture to it. The sister's missing. You know, where is the sister at? Why is IUIC? I stay out of camp doctrine, so I don't, I don't deal with camps and all their shenanigans that they do or what they don't do but you know recently IUIC had this big march and that was a positive image that came out of Israelites because most of the time you see images of Israelites and it's always negative it's always um, GMX or you know one of them the hardcore camps that are um, hey guys that are tuning in. It's always one of the hardcore camps that are bashing people. You know, we had the recent in the incident in Washington with the Native American and the Israelite, but the government is always trying to make us look like some extremists. And that's the way they've categorized us. They've categorized us as extremists, you know, as, um, you know, they've got us on their FBI watch and stuff like that. So then when you have IUIC come out and they do this march and it's a positive image and really, in my perception, it really, um, mimic Marcus Garvey and his movement. Like I said, I said a camp doctrine and, and camp shenanigans, but um, I I was really, really, really proud of that moment because, like I said, it gave a positive spin to something, to our belief system that is constantly being um, looked at as something that's negative. So anyways... So then you have a couple months later, I don't know, when, when did they do that? They did that in the summer, I guess. You know, and now we've got this whole Joy Morgan thing. And I mean, I don't know how much of you guys are really, people say they're awake and there's this different kind of wake. You have naturally awake, which is awake to, you know, conspiracies, government and yada, yada, yada. Then you have like spiritually awake, but mm -hmm. the government is always infiltrating nations. Always. They've always done this. They infiltrate governments. They're doing it right now in Venezuela. They did it all throughout the Middle East. This is what they do. They infiltrated um, uh, um, Martin Luther King. They infiltrated Marcus Garvey. The reason why Marcus Garvey's ship line went down is because his best friend was infiltrated by the government and they sabotaged him and made him buy a bad boat. So what I'm, my point is that it's not surprising to know that any of these organizations, even smaller Israelite organizations, are probably infiltrated by the government. Now, to say, I'm not using that as an excuse to say, you know, the government did this to Joy Morgan and they put somebody in there. But anytime you have a revolution, anytime you have an uprising, the government's there with their hand on it and their eye on it. Mm -hmm. And are not preparing our people they don't have us minded to know that this government is out to get us and yeah they say oh the government's out to get us the government's out to get us but what are you doing about it are you prepping are you so putting up supplies are you farming i mean there's a couple camps out there you've got dow who's doing a good job but is there so many camps and congregations out there that are doing nothing they're not preparing their people for anything and then you know i see brothers but oh i'm gonna just go to a female concentration camp i'm gonna go to a camp that's so dumb you got a wife and kids like why would you put your wife and kids through more and excessive harm than need be. People out here buying cars, they're buying houses, they're buying, air where's your passport? Where is your passport? You, If you have child support owed, no passport. Um, certain people felonies, no passport. They have a new one now where they're trying to put, if you owe more than $10,000 in taxes, you can't get a passport. No longer can you fly without this real ID unless you have a passport. And how many of you guys are going to honestly get this real? I've seen people get the real ID. I, I disagree with getting the real ID. But it's like you want to go out there and get this real ID so that you can fly. But if you had a passport, which would allow you to do so much more than just fly within the country... You'd be able to fly outside of the country and go to places where you won't be under this government's persecution, you know, but y'all won't do that because instead of spending $170 for a passport, you got some new Jordans. Instead of spending $170 for a passport, you got the newest, um, what's this galaxy 
note flip the tablet the tablet phone for a thousand dollars you guys have your mind wrapped up on the wrongest things right now right now is not the time to be trying to set up and look like the joneses in america right now is not the time to be um focus on materialistic things right now is the time to think bigger and broader and have a broader perspective of what's going on in the world. So my point is to say is that joy is missing. Joy needs to be found. But do I think that this government is not a part of why she's missing? No, I feel like she is like the government is a part. I feel like the government has infiltrated. I feel like the government is using this as another opportunity to um to discredit and Okay, so Hebrew Israelites, to me, is like Christianity. You've got so many different branches or whatever. But the world looks at us as a whole. They don't look at Christians as a whole. They look at Muslims as a whole, but they and they look at Israelites as a whole. One Christian can do anything, and that's that one Christian. But let one Israelite do something. It's all of us. And IUIC is not helping the situation. These media outlets are out here portraying us like we are the worst people in the whole wide world and IUIC is not helping by taking the stance of uh don't I mean this is what I've heard uh, I stay out of people's business but what I've heard is they've got people signing um non-disclosure agreements you know not talking to the police why would you why are you guys doing that like if it was your daughter missing if it was your son missing for all these people who out here who signed this non-disclosure agreement, what scriptures do they have to say that you have to sign this agreement and you can't talk to the police? I really, I really, honestly, this isn't like, I'm not baiting you. I really want to know what scriptures they're using because there, in, in my opinion, there, there is nothing mm -hmm. that they can say that they can use to force you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Because they don't want you to talk to police because the sister's missing. If anything, we should be at the forefront. We should be the one out on the ground searching the um, searching the fields. You know, we should be out there. This is our sister. So to those of you who are raising, raising awareness, I appreciate it. You know, um, I pray that everybody continue to keep pushing their finger on this button. If we keep pushing, they're going to break. You know, this is this isn't just a sister from London. This is our sister. This is all of our sisters. You know, we need to make sure she comes home. Too many black women go missing and nobody does anything about it. But this is a micro situation. This is our sister. This is our black quote unquote. Our black sister is missing. So let's make sure that we do what we need to do necessary to bring her home. Once again, I still feel like there's the the government, you know intermingling in this whole thing but that's just my perspective on it let's bring home our sister i hope you guys got something from this get your minds right stop buying phones stop buying cars stop buying houses buy a passport get your children passport and be prepared in case something happens and you need to have supplies on hand because just remember when um when uh, we had the financial crisis back in the day. Now, I'm not talking about 2008. Um, it slips my mind. But way back in the day, and they had bread lines. And they had people standing in line. If you got your own flour, you don't got to stand in a bread line. If you got your own canned food, you don't got to go and get their government handouts. So get your stuff together. Get, get your mind right, you guys. I love you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Shalom.